Α περάσουμε τώρα στο επόμενο θέμα που αφορά την αποκλειστική συνέντευξη που παραχώρησε στο σταθμό μα ο υποψήφιο Δημοτικό Σύμβουλο Στέφανο Ιωάννου. Παρά το νεαρό τη ηλικία του, ο Στέφανο Ιωάννου έχει μεγάλη πολιτική δράση αφού είναι οργανωμένο από νεαρή ηλικία στο κόμμα των συντηρητικών, με το οποίο κατεβαίνει και σαν υποψήφιο. Τη συνέντευξη πήρε για το Hellenic TV ο Χρήστο Τουρτών, ο οποίο είναι Γενικό Γραμματέα τη Εθνική Κυπριακή Ομοσπονδία και μέλο τη ΕΠΟΜΑΚ. Στο βίντεο που ακολουθεί θα παρακολουθήσουμε ένα μέρος από αυτή τη συνέντευξη όπου μας έδωσε ο Στέφανος Ιωάννου και μιλάει για τις δραστηριότητές του και τις πολιτικές του φιλοδοξίες. Hello, my name is Christos Schuten and I'm the Vice President of Nebelmark UK. Um, and I'm sat here today with a fellow Nebelmark UK committee member and friend, Stefanos Ioannou. Thank you Stefanos for joining us today. Thank you for having me here today. Stefanos is a candidate for the Conservative Party in the local elections in May for the Southgate Ward in Enfield. And if he's elected, Stefanos will represent Southgate on Enfield Council. Um, given he's doing this incredible thing, the Nebelmark UK committee thought it would be a great opportunity to speak to him about his experience and his campaign, and more generally about the engagement of young Cypriots in politics here in Britain. Um, One of Nebelmark's key aims is to encourage our members and the community to engage with politics. And before the general election in 2017, we made a video about why it's important to vote and why it's important for young people to have their voices heard in, in British politics. Um, so, yeah, it's great that we're here today to talk about this issue. And I'd like to in introduce Stefanos a bit by asking him some questions about his background and, and where, where he grew up. So, Stefanos, if you could tell us a little bit about that. So, um, yeah, okay, thank you for having me on the programme. Um, so, I was born in Witchmore Hill, grew up in North London, born to Cypriot parents, attended school locally, went to St Andrew's School, and then went on to Highlands, went to Greek school, not only undertook GCSE, but also did my A-levels there, and now I'm currently at uni. I'm at University of Hertfordshire. Um, so... Yeah, I grew up in a typical Greek household with uh, both my parents making sure that I know my culture and my twin sister as well, Maria, who is uh, part of my, my, my rock. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit, a bit about me, about my family. Very supportive family. Very supportive family, yeah. I wouldn't be able to do many of the things I could without them. They always, they always push me on, so, yeah, it's always good to have them next you, to me. And you said you were studying? Um, mm -hmm. What are you studying? Study economics. Um, let's see if I go and do postgraduate. You never know. But um, yeah, for the for the time being, I'm just doing my undergrad and uh, running for council simultaneously. So yeah. And how are you balancing your time doing both those things? Balancing balancing in uh, balancing politics with uni is very difficult. I signed up to the Conservative Party when I was 15 years old. And uh, ever since then, I've been roped in, whether it be in the youth wing, European campaigns, and subsequently, you know, running in an election myself. So it's demanding, but as long as you know the balance, it shouldn't put, shouldn't put people off. Um, so long as you maintain that balance and you're not scared and you say to yourself, you prioritize and you say, right, I've got to do this and I've got to do that, then you, you will be fine. You shouldn't be scared of it. Great. And, and another part of your time is working for Nebelmac on a voluntary basis. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a bit about your involvement in Nebelmac. So I started off with Nebelmac uh, when my uncle, uh, who, who's involved with, with the Federation, he told me, look, as a young Cypriot, you have to get involved in, in Nebelmac. Nebelmac is, a, is, is part of the fabric. It's a key part of the organization, just like the National Federation of Cypriots, just like our Greek schools and our churches, churches Hellenic TV. It's, it's that... It's the basis, I believe, of the youth of this country, and I believe they've got more than a thousand members. But anyhow, so I got invited, and I said, "Look," they said to me, "Sorry, look, get involved." So uh, I went along to one of the meetings, and ever since then, I formed a relationship. I thought it was a good bunch of uh, young Greek Cypriots, like-minded, who wanted to do something for the community. I mean, uh, they've done numerous charity. Um, they've organized, uh, you know, social events. Um, they've promoted our culture and sought to make something good out of that by making um, public awareness. 
Um, so the main thing is just maintaining your culture, being around a good, like-minded group of friends, and promoting Cyprus in any way possible. So, yeah, when I joined Nepomak, never looked back, and um, they've been so so active. You're, you're never bored. You know, you're always, you've always got something to do in Nepomak, and that's really really good. And you've been an elected member of the committee in the UK region for a couple of years now. Mm. Um, and so tell us about some of the projects you've done. I know there was the Santa Shoebox charity campaign and you were quite involved in that. So tell us a little bit about what that entailed. So the committee um, has been going from strength to strength. We've been getting quality members, mm -hmm. um, all of which are assigned different tasks throughout the year. And um, everything is done on a group effort basis. So uh, with the Santa Shoebox appeal, it was a, it was a really, really good cause. So uh, myself, Mary Savidis, um, George Taylor and, and, uh, and a few others, uh, forgive me if I haven't mentioned their names, and a few others, we got together and we said, look, let's do something this Christmas where we give something uh, back to young people of the Cypriot homeland community back at home. So we set out on the Santa shoebox appeal, which uh, filled up a shoebox full of toys and um, all sorts of uh, things that you can give for Christmas to presents for young ones. Um, in, at Christmas and uh, we sent them off to Cyprus through the generosity of uh, people such as Mondial which did the shipping for us free, uh, Big Yellow Soul Storage which gave us uh, free packaging and also the community which donated um, um, free goods to put into shoeboxes. We went out to the Greek schools, Mary did, I remember she went out to the Greek schools and uh, we managed to get Greek schools to get on board and it was, it was, a, it was a fantastic effort because when you saw the result um, the pictures on the, on the faces of children back, back, back at home um, when they received the presents, it was something amazing. And, it, and if it wasn't for Nepomak, they wouldn't have had presents. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and it was incredible because there were Greek schools in Birmingham, Stoke, um, Cardiff, that also took part in that campaign. And, and they'd never really engaged with us before, and that was a really good first contact. And yet, like you said, seeing the pictures of children in the Magarios Hospital in Nicosia and generally in the schools around Nicosia was just a fantastic thing and, and we were all quite I remember Harry. I remember Harry when um, he went up to Birmingham with a car and uh, he, he drove hundreds of miles to collect something like 20, 30 boxes. It just proved that every single box counts. So it was a, it was a genuine group effort and it was so rewarding. So, Nepomak, there you go. It's a great thing to be involved with that. Definitely. Um, so, well, you, you're a pretty busy guy. So, so, what made you get involved with politics while you were so young? That's a very good question. Why did I get involved in politics? So, um, the, the first time I genuinely said to myself, right, you know what, let, let, let's, let's, let's see what can be done. Um, it was the youth wing. So, it was the time of David Cameron, where... Uh, you know, the, the, the time is different, so we've, we've kind of moved on now with Theresa May. But back with David Cameron, we were socially liberal and uh, we believed in, um, you know, the big society and um, all those kind of other values. And that's something that I got on board with. And the first time I got involved in politics was in the youth wing, in Conservative Future. And um, I was invited uh, to Stanford Committee. And I ended up becoming chairman of the, uh, of the branch for Enfield Southgate, David Burroughs' uh, Len constituency now with Bambos. But, um, yeah, and um, we, we built up the youth wing from there. We got 10, 20 members, and um, we organised socials, and um, it was just an opportunity to form kind of like a youth base within our area. But why did I start that off in the first place? Because I had to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanted to give something back to the community which I live in, and it's kind of reflected also what I'm doing now, standing for council in Southgate. I've always looked to better the lives, not only uh, of, of the local community, but say what I believe. And um, I'm quite opinionated, so um, getting involved in politics was something that I said to myself, yeah, and uh, I don't regret it. I don't regret it. And I encourage others to, to do it as well. Why do you think it's important that, that young people and young Cypriots like yourself are engaged and involved? I think the number of Cypriots in the UK is around 300, 400,000, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, 300,000. 300,000 Cypriots living here in the UK. We've assimilated into society where we're going to schools, established businesses, great professions. 
And then you ask yourself, hold on a minute, we're doing so well as a community. Why don't we represent ourselves on a much greater basis in, uh, in, in the national front, in politics? And we do have other councillors with Labour. We have Liberal Democrat and we have Conservative councillors. Uh, we recently had our first elected Cypriot MP, Bambos. So the, 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 there are Cypriots getting into politics, but the point is, is that young Cypriots in particular, who are the next generation, they shouldn't be scared to get involved in politics because it is rewarding and you can do a great deal of change to your community. But it's the fundamental point that if the Jewish community or the Hindi community or, the, uh, or any other community can manage to get their representatives on that level, then why can't we? We are equally as educated, we are equally as capable and we're such a close community. It, I, I, I think it's, you know, we, sh we, sh we should really be up there. Yeah, and it seems to be like one of the last areas where, where Cypriots need to start excelling, really. Mm. I think we've got some, some top lawyers, we've got top business people, like you said. Top teachers. Top teachers, yeah, yeah. exactly, as we proved recently with uh, Andrea Zafiragu winning the Global Teacher Prize. Um, but yeah, and, and now with Bambos Haralambos in, in Enfield Southgate, we've got our first MP from the community. And I think that will be, maybe that will break the barrier and, and kind of inspire other people to do the same. Um, but you mentioned there that, that Cypriots might be a little bit afraid. What, what do you mean by that? So politics. Politics isn't an easy thing. Uh, there could be all sorts of critical people. It's very difficult to, to get your name out there and to preach on someone else's name. I mean, when I go out campaigning, not everybody that I uh, knock on the door or everybody that I speak to are necessarily supportive of me. But if you're genuinely a person who cares about your community, if you've grown up locally, if, uh, if, if, if you care and you share some sort of passion that can resonate with somebody else, then people will look at you and say, hmm, you know what, maybe, 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 maybe I'm feeling this person, maybe, maybe I'll hand up my vote. And it's a case where somebody from that might be lifelong in one party will come the election, will give you, say, one vote or for whatever party, whatever background you are, because they know you, because they understand who you are. So it's about who you are and what you want to give back to your community and what you believe in that resonates with other people that say, I have confidence in this person. But people, they, sh they shouldn't be afraid, especially young Cypriots. No, they should not be afraid. What advice would you give a young Cypriot? In respect of politics? Yeah. Um, so the first thing is to do your research, mm -hmm. find out which party is best for you. Um, and I just want, just want to go back. So when I was at Conservative Future, I spoke with people from my party, like-minded, but also I spoke to people from the other side. Um, you shouldn't be afraid to engage people in politics, whatever background they are. You should be open. You should be tolerant, you should respect the fact that other people have views. But to get people to the point where they participate in politics on an active level is good enough. Mm. I always said when I was chairman of Conservative Future in my area, I don't mind what aspect of politics you are from, as long as you go out and vote. Because a lot of young people, they don't vote. So my advice to a young Cypriot would be do your research, find out which political party you align yourself most closely to. You might not agree with everything, but at least you align yourself with some sort of ideology. Um, go and sign up, become a member, and then see what you can do since then. I mean, or if, if you don't find a political party, then get involved with the National Federation of Cypriots. They have a cross-party, uh, cross-ideological, um, cross-attitude basis on their panel. Mm -hmm. So that's a good starting point. And NEPAMAC. So there yeah, you go. Course. Like, I think they're not political. In Nebelmac, we we're not very political. We have committee members involved in a cop in different parties. So, like you said, it's important to engage wherever it is. And you just happen to have taken the step to be in a candidate for local council. Um, and kind of coming back to what's really important to a lot of Cypriots in this country, the Cyprus issue. Um, how do you think? that being involved in politics can, can help raise awareness on that? The Cyprus issue since 1974, it's, um, it's been, pro 
it's been prolonged for so many years and organisations such as the National Federation and other splinter groups have tried so hard to put through this issue. And it is succeeding slowly, slowly, but it's a really long issue because we have, of course, a Turkish super community here. But from a personal perspective, so my father left as a refugee um, in 1974. My grandparents, uh, they moved over to Greece. And um, the, the, the Cyprus issue is still an issue that we talk about, even at the dinner table. It comes out in passing. Um, we still organize, the National Federation of Cypriots, they organize rallies every single year. It's still an integral part, even for UK Cypriots, and even for global Cypriots, that's still one part of, uh, of, of, their, of, their, of their homeland and want some sort of justice. And there have been people who have passed in life who have sadly not seen a solution. So um, the, the struggle is real, and the reality is, is that this is going to be a really, really slow process. However, UK Cypriots and UK Cypriot uh, organisations slowly, slowly are getting the message across and uh, people are starting to take this really, really seriously because it can't be that we're the last divided capital city in Europe. So uh, how can young Cypriots um, uh, contribute? Number one is to keep themselves informed, uh, make sure that they read Cypriot news, make sure that they lobby their MPs, which is really, really important, lobby their MPs, whether it be Bambos, Theresa Villiers, uh, Matthew Offord, or places where our community is strong. Make sure that you write to your MP when things, uh, when things do arise, and make sure you say, look, this is, uh, this is an issue, please take it seriously. I remember with the EEZ, I received an email from the National Federation, and uh, I, I, I later received an email telling me 2,000 people had signed. 2,000 people to go and send out a message like that on a community basis to the government is very, very important. And young people can be, can be part of that. So don't just disregard, don't just look over issues. Make sure that you, that you, um, that you, that you take action. Εδώ να σας αναφέρουμε ότι η ολόκληρη τη συνέντευξη θα την παρουσιάσουμε αύριο Σάββατο στις 8 το βράδυ στην εκπομπή με το Φακό Τιχελέν TV.